Here we go, we, we're recording. Go on, go ahead. Right. Master Thatcher, John Kenward from Edenbridge, Kent, sixth generation Thatcher, making thatching spars. And they are for this roof up here? For this roof up here. And there's a shortage of thatching spars at the moment. And we've got to cut and make, cut our sticks and make all our own thatching spars, which is very time consuming. And we need your contact number. Uh, my number is 079 71 328 011. Okay then. And let's just see one being made then. Close up. Hang right, on, let me get a better one. That stick's not very good. And you cut these sticks yourself out? You cut your sticks? You well, cut these we, sticks yeah, we cut these sticks. I mean, most of the time, I do try to buy them because this is too time consuming. Hey, what? It's too time time consuming. Oh, right. And how much are they to buy? Uh, I think they're about one hundred and eighty pound a thousand. One hundred and eighty pound a thousand. Yeah. Uh, made in Taiwan, are they? No. No. They are made made in this country. Some Polish make them. You've done that before, haven't you? I've done it a few times. How old was you when you first went up on the roof then, John? I was four years old. Four years old? Up at Henley on Thames. My wow. dad went for a cup of tea and he'd come round to see me up this great big high ladder. <laughs> So you was born for the job, basically, eh? Well, I suppose so. And what's the worst accident you've ever had? Oh, I fell off a roof and uh, a bit through my tongue and, and uh, I was soaking wet and uh, it shook me up a bit. I was lucky I didn't break any bones. And another time, this chap who I had working with me, I said to him about these wires when I was rearing a ladder up. Yeah. That's whatever happens, if my ladder goes near those wires, you've got to tell me. And uh, yeah, all right. And he was on the bottom of the ladder, and all of a sudden I've heard a, like a big clap of thunder, and I've gone, what the hell is that? that? Yeah. And he said, oh, there's all sparks coming off the ladder, it's from them wires. I dropped the ladder. There's two things I think that saved me. I had DeWalt boots on, which I think were insulated. And I had Sainsbury's kitchen gloves, the blue ones, which I use every now and then when I dress the reed on. Uh, it just saves my hands when they get sore. And I think that's what saved me, otherwise I, sh I shouldn't be here. Somebody up there likes me. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the most funniest experience you had? Funniest? Yeah. I'll tell you a story about I needed to cut some hazel sticks. These. I was doing a roof at Shipham near Tunbridge and I went up to a local roof, a uh, local woods. And I didn't have permission, only wanted a few sticks, so I went into the woods, started cutting a few sticks and I was having a good run. When you have a good run you just can't stop yourself. Mm, yeah, yeah. And uh, I cut these sticks and I looked out to my truck and there was two policemen looking at my truck. And the, the truck was all sign written and everything. Everything was all kosher, legal. So I thought I'd better go over there. So I see these two young policemen and I said, all right, gentlemen. He said, yeah, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm in a thatcher. I said, sorry, I'm, I'm a thatcher. I'm in the wood cutting sticks. And uh, they said, you got permission? I thought, I didn't know what to say and I thought, it must have been my dad, he must have zapped into me, because I wouldn't have thought of this. I said, I don't need permission. They said, how did you work that out then? I said, well under the signing of the Magna Carta at running me, I've got Thatcher's rights. And I can cut in any hedgerow woodland in the land. And they believed it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You right, is there a fine? Eh? Is there a fine if you do anything like that then in well, the woods? You should really do it. But I always, if ever I am short of sticks, 
Well, I do cut a few. It's, yeah, it's, where I have not got permission. I'll leave it all nice and tidy. Leave it, it nice and tidy. So if a gamekeeper comes in, turn out. Gamekeeper comes in. The wood, he can see that. Well, someone has been in here, but at least, at least he's left it tidy. Whoever in here. I don't suppose that law is enforced, is it? You're not doing no harm, really. No, that law isn't enforced. Hmm? You're actually um, no helping the woods, aren't you? Eh? You're actually improving the woods. Yeah, because the woods need cutting, but the, the woods aren't coppiced anymore. This is why you're getting a lot of hazel spars made out in Poland. Because the you don't get you don't get the charcoal. Uh, guys you used to get in the woods years ago. I was over in Keston Woods a few years ago and it looked like those had been uh, cut about because they've got a lot of small branches growing out stumps in the ground, you know. Yeah. But the thing is now, where we've got so many deer running around, when the wood is cleared, all the deer just eat all the new shoots. I've never seen a deer in this country. No? We see them all the time. Oh, no. Not round here, I have down Devon. No, around here? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. You've only got to go the white ones, didn't they, John? Really? Yeah, albino ones. Um, we see a big, uh, big, what do you call one? With the antlers and everything. The other Stag. one. Stag, that's it. On the place of Charles, Toys Hill. Oh, yeah. Always see them there, yeah. Yep. John, could you make me up some niggers, please? And um, I'll get up there. Do your customers look after you? They give you lunches and dinners and cream cakes and coffees? Some customers do. They only get a cup of coffee here. So you've been lots of lovely people to work for. We've even had a few bottles of wine. Oh, you don't want that up on the roof, do you? No. Uh -huh. Not really. You think you can fly? I want to get home. <laughs> you think you can fly? <laughs> <laughs> My granddad years ago, he was uh, he uh, had been down the pub. He was working at Shoreham, and want to talk a bit, John? Yes, please, Will. Yeah. And uh, he come back from the pub, and the. Um, farmer had left all his bullets out. Oh yeah. And they had messed all over my granddad's straw. And he had a set pin. He was up the roof and he lost his temper and he had a set pin, which is a T-shaped pin we used to uh, use for setting out our courses. And then his temper, he pulled it out and threw it over his shoulder, this set pin. And it span round and hit his bullet through the stomach. Really? Yeah, and the bullet ran three times round this field and laid down and died. And uh, yeah, my, my, my granddad. He stuck in a, him, he stuck in him. Yeah, he had a big row with the farmer and he was fuming because the farmer had let all the bullets mess all over his straw. It wasn't nice. Mm -hmm. Alas, that wasn't nice for the bullet. Take something to, to puncture the skin of a. Yeah, well, I think he. Hmm? I think he. Um, he might have trapped it over his shoulder with a bit of force. <laughs> I remember years ago, I was boxing at the Woodville Hall in Gravesend. I was born in Gravesend. Was you? Yeah. I fetch rules out that way. And I can remember that place, Woodville Hall, being built. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was actually working at... I don't know yet. And I was only a young lad, at 20 then. 20, yeah, 20. And keep the box. And then what happened? I was making one of these, and the bullet slipped and cut my thumb nail. Anyway, I had my medical, and the doctor went and looked at my hands, and I put my hand out like that, covered my thumb up. Somehow he, he missed the cut. And I boxed. And all the time I was boxing, I couldn't feel anything. Didn't feel any pain or anything. Cut your nerve. Adrenaline. 
Anyway, see that kind of thing. And as soon as that bell finished, my thumb was throbbing like I don't know what. And uh, that was no good. Where did you use the box then? Oh, box of free clubs. I was a box of South Normal when I was a kid. And then I. No injuries then? And then I boxed a Canterbury when I was in my early 20s, and then Crawley. So I moved back, I was working down East Kent with my father. I used to train it. My brother boxed at Crawley, uh, Canterbury. He's also a thatcher as well. And he lives on the Isle of Thanet. And which area do you live in then? Edenbridge. Oh, crikey, right out in, the, out in the sticks. Yeah, that's right, it's out in the sticks, is it? Hmm? It's quite handy, we have got London, we're sort of halfway between London and Brighton, which is not, not yeah. a bad place to live. And the countryside is beautiful around there. You'll be away by Christmas then, eh? I've got to be. I've got to be out of it this week. You got much to do? Yeah. That's a staple. Ooh. Yeah. Wait. You showed me how you make it. Yeah. How you bend it. It's quite flexible, isn't it? Yeah. You got to know what you're doing. I mean, it's pretty wet now. Though. If it, if that dries out, you wouldn't be able to do that, would you? I like it a little bit drier. Um, we only cut these yesterday. They can run off a bit if you uh, are not careful. Nice bit of straight grain in it. Yeah. Hmm? You get knots and stuff. It's a bit, a bit, a bit yeah. But the other ones, I like some longer ones. Who's your mate? Is he family? His dad's been a Good mate of mine for donkey's years. Yeah. I've seen him grow up, so. Now these long ones are called liggers. All oh, right, okay. L I double G E R S. Why are they called? Uh, what's the difference? Well, you get, these are called spars. Yeah. And then you get them shaved out at the end. We shave all ours out. They're called diamonds. What we use to make the diamond pattern. And that one you're making now, what's that one used for? This one, this is a ligger. Yeah, what's that used for? Going horizontally along. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. You pick the straightest sticks. Good man. And there's not many thatchers these days that make their own uh, hazel. A lot of thatchers can't make it. It they looks easy. You, you make it look easy. I haven't come up in taught old school uh, ways. I say you make it look easy. <laughs> hmm? Well, I've been doing it long enough. I was 11 when I first made these. Yeah. That pad you've got on your left knee there, is yeah. that specially designed for the job? No, no, it's just a, just a roofer's knee pad. A knee pad for anything really then? Yeah. I have got some old car, uh, coal miners, Kent coal miners knee pads which I like to use. I've, uh, I've got to dig them out of my shed. You've got a few things in your shed? Yeah, I have them all. You don't really need any special tools for this, do you? Yeah, some tools, yeah. Special, yeah? Yeah, I've got a, a, an ease knife. Oh, I'm talking about special machinery. Oh, no, no, yeah. you can't use machinery, really. Which type of weather do you prefer when you do this? 
I don't like it too hot. If it's too hot, you can it gets too much. And I tend to frequent the pub when it's too hot. But uh You have any awkward customers? Most customers are lovely. Right. Every now and then we meet meet one that's up for so and so. But most customers are over the moon with what we do. But I've, I've it's just like a convey about a life, isn't it? You're going to meet some people. Sure is. Which you can't. Can't help. You just can't see right away with. But most of the customers I work for are, are over the moon with what, what I do. It can be a bit messy for some customers when they're yeah. out of completely thatched. But how do they find you? Do you advertise, or is it word of mouth? Well, the mouth, most, mostly. My website is down at the moment. I've got a new website coming out. Yeah. But there's not many of them out there. I can say there. It's not the sort of job everybody likes to do, is it? Outside, it's a it's bit a tough kind job. of it's, tough it's, job. It's, yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, can I say, it's a way of life, thatching. Yeah. It's not. Forget it, forget it if you think you're in it for the money. Oh, put that in there. That one run off. That's a, yeah, that's a dry one, they're too dry. My mate must have cut him, because I wouldn't have done. No, that's... <laughs> what do we do with that one? Oh, let's have one more look at the roof, that lovely roof you've been doing. Yeah. I've made a nice, good documentary here, haven't I? <laughs> I'll have to sell it to the BBC. Um, there's copyright on that for John Ken Ward, I must say. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> We've got your phone We've number. We've been on the television loads of times, anyway. How oh, have you? Yeah. Really? I was interviewed on BBC London live the other day, the other week, on the radio station. Well, about 18 months ago, should I say. About the job? Yeah, on the Joe Good show. It was interesting, I quite enjoyed that. I've been on the television a few times for what it's worth. I used to have a dog called Champ years ago. Yeah. And he was a top of Jack Russell. And he used to climb up the roofs and down the roofs till he was about eight. And then he got run over. Yeah. Oh. And he could never climb down after that. Climb up, he could certainly still do. I mean, there's only so many roofs you can do, isn't there, in a year? It's not that you can do thousands of them because it's so time consuming, isn't it? It's time consuming, yeah. But like tiling, isn't it? The tiler can put on five times. The area is what a thatcher can put on in a day. Mm, so there's only a limited amount you can do. I've gone back to making spars now. I might be making well a few liggers. <laughs> I suppose their old-fashioned names gone down through the centuries, have they? For yeah, in, uh, what do they call these in Ireland? Um, scallops, they call these in Ireland. I wonder how you got a name like that. I wonder. There's different names around the country. Yeah. One last roof. One, two, three. three. That's it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. All right.